Grain from North Africa, metals from Iberia, wines from Gaul, and scholars from Ephesus could be found in every corner of the empire and even far beyond. As was often the case with Rome, commerce followed conquest as new provinces made for new and exciting sources of wealth and overland trade operated along the robust network of roads that was built to transport armies. This roadmap is one of the single most beautiful sites I've ever laid eyes on, and my wife Cyan is really pretty. And the marble work doesn't stop there, because lest we forget, the Romans were engineering maniacs. Concrete, domes, arches, water highways that ferry delicious H2O from the mountains down into cities, heated floors! The Romans literally had no chill when it came to construction. And this marks a distinction between the quiet vibrance of private art and the big public works, where they never built a thing for the sake of its beauty, but rather for the sake of their glory. The true Roman artists were the engineers, who built not only temples and theaters, but roads, bridges, aqueducts, and baths. It's a practical, functional artistry where the beauty lies in the accomplishment and its usefulness to the empire, and the fact that they are also beautiful is a flourish. A really big one. To illustrate a few converging themes, let's look at the single greatest monument to Roman extravagance, the Colosseum. This neighborhood of the city had burned down in 64 AD, swiftly to be replaced with a palace for the exceptionally crazed Emperor Nero, and then replaced again by the new Emperor Vespasian, the victor in a brief but fierce four-way civil war after Nero's death. Vespasian's plan to legitimize his new Flavian dynasty was essentially to bribe the Roman people with a grand public project and the promise of splendid games in said arena once it was done. 